Okay, so the next question I want to look at is what happens to the current in the primary versus the current in the secondary when we have a transformer in a circuit? We've said that transformers change the voltage, but they can't violate conservation of energy. And one of the things that we talked about earlier in the course is that power is energy per time. So the energy per time that goes in one side of the transformer has to be equal to the energy per time that comes out the other side. If we, we can't get more energy out than we put in. Hopefully you remember that power in an electrical circuit is just current times voltage. So in other words, the current in the primary transformer or the primary coil times the voltage in the primary has to be equal to the current in the secondary times the voltage in the secondary. Okay, And therefore you'll notice that when the voltage in the secondary goes up, correspondingly the current in the secondary has to go down so that the, the power in is equal to the power out. Now combining that with the other equation that we had, which is Vs over Vp is equal to Ns over Np, we can uh, combine those two equations in a couple different ways. Um, first of all, just rewriting that equation for the current in terms of the voltage would look like that. If we combine these two equations, then we get this equation. So in other words, depending on what it is we're looking for in the problem, whether it's we're looking for current or voltage or number of turns, we might use any one of these equations. So let's try out another problem and see how this works. It says there are 200 turns on the primary side of a transformer and 100,000 turns on the secondary side. If the current in the primary is one amp, what is the current in the secondary? Okay, so you'll notice that this is the, uh, the same transformer that we talked about in a previous problem. And here we're asked for the current in the secondary, so that's IS. And so if I multiply both sides of that equation by IP, I get IS is equal to NP over NS times IP, and the number of turns in the primary was 200. The current in the primary was 1 amp, and the number of turns in the secondary was 100,000. And when we work that out, it comes out to 0 0.002 amps, or 2 milliamps. And what you'll notice is, remember, this is a step-up transformer because it steps up the voltage. But what we see is that a step-up transformer correspondingly decreases the current. So if it increases the voltage, it has to decrease the current so that it doesn't violate conservation of energy. Let's talk about the different types of transformers. There are actually three types that you want to know about. The first type is called a closed core, and that's what we've been talking about, or that's what I've been using um, as my example transformer. All of these transformers work the same in terms of the equation is the same. In a closed core transformer, we have two separate coils that are surrounded by a square uh, core of iron. And turns out that closed core transformers are good for high voltage, and uh, they work by mutual induction, meaning that there's one coil that creates the magnetic field, and then that changing magnetic field creates a current in the second coil. That's what we mean by mutual induction. The next type that we want to talk about is the auto transformer. And in an auto transformer, it turns out that there's only one coil, but we just have different contact points. And here's a here's one picture of, of it from your book, but here's kind of one that I like better. It shows that it's really just one coil of wire, and we connect the primary side to 
two points along the coil, and then the secondary side connects to the same point on one side, but then it can connect to different points on the other side, and therefore we can pick different voltages. So that allows it to have to act as more than one uh, setting of transformer. In other words, maybe it doubles the voltage, maybe it also multiplies the voltage by three, etc. So an auto transformer, it just has a single coil. And we call that self-inductance, um, the way that that works, where it's just one coil doing the job of the two coils in the previous design. The third design is called the shell type. And uh, this one works very well for high voltage especially. It's the most efficient kind. And here we have a slightly different orientation for the iron. And then again, like in the auto transformer, um, it's, it's a, a single coil of wire. I wanted to just talk about one place that you, another place that you've seen uh, transformers before, and that is in electric power distribution. And this is kind of an interesting uh, thing to understand. When the power plant generates electricity, it doesn't generate it at that 110 or 120 volts. It actually generates it at a much higher voltage. And then that electricity goes through a step up transformer. And the reason for that is that there's less loss of energy over the transmission lines if it's sent at high voltage versus if it's sent at a lower voltage and a higher current. So it's better to send at high voltage and low current. And so that's why when you see those high voltage transmission lines, you know, they're those big towers and uh, that are generally not near where people are living because if you get, you know, climbed up one of those towers, you could get electrocuted. Once the, uh, once the electricity gets near our houses, then it needs to be stepped down to a more safe level for us to work with. And you've probably all driven by a substation at some point in your lives. And that's where the high voltage power lines end. And there's a series of transformers there that step the voltage down. So we go from 12,000 volts at the power company gets stepped up to 240,000 volts for transmission over the power lines. And then at the substation, it gets stepped down to just a couple thousand volts. The last place that it gets stepped down is right before it comes into your house. And you've probably noticed what look like these big gray cans that are mounted on telephone poles. Those are transformers. They're the final step down transformer that transforms the voltage down to the 240 volts that comes into your house. Your house then actually splits that into two 120 volt lines that power your 120 volt um, appliances, but that way it can also power 240 volt appliances, which you probably also have in your house or apartment. Okay, so that's one of the main places that transformers are used is in power transmission.